Hey, what's up guys? Nick White here. I do tech Cody stuff on Twitch and YouTube. Check the description for all of my information. Um, I want to talk about problem categories and uh, right now I want to talk about binary search. Um, problem categories, if you look on LeetCode, there's a million problem categories. We could just navigate to the homepage and look at some of them really quick. Uh, people categorize the, everything differently. Everyone, you know, I've seen a lot of posts where people have different categories and stuff like that. Uh, these are pretty generic categories. These, you know, count, you know, just individual data structures as categories. Some are about approaches, uh, you know, dynamic programming, backtracking, types of approaches, types of problems, types of solution. So there's definitely a lot of categories, and I kind of want to start breaking this down. Uh, one category that is uh, pretty elementary and is going to come up all the time in interviews, especially in my internship interviews, there are variation problems. Uh, is binary search. If you cannot solve a binary search problem, then you're most likely not going to be a fit candidate for the position because binary search is one of the, you know, introductory algorithms that you're going to learn in uh, any algorithms course or just in computer science in general, right? If you don't know what binary search is, it is a faster way to search in a sorted array. It has to be a sorted array. Uh, so, for example, one, two, three, four, five, six. You normally, if you wanted to find a number, say we were taking in a target number that we're looking for in an array of numbers, you would loop through the array, right? You would just go, okay, is this the one we're looking for? One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, maybe it was six, and then it takes you the whole way to get to the end of the array. And it's linear, which isn't that slow, but binary search is better. Uh, in a sorted array, you do not have to do that. Um, if you ever have used a phone book before, the names are sorted alphabetically. So if you're looking for someone whose last name is L, are you going to go page by page through all of the A's, then the B's, then the C's? No, you're just going to open it up to the middle. And that's what we do in binary search. We look at a sorted array and we guess, we look at the middle, and if what we're looking for is less than whatever's in the middle, we look on the left side of the array. And then we look in the middle again, and we keep cutting the search space in half. Uh, if it was greater than, we look on the right side, and then again, we do the same process. So that's binary search. I'm sure you're all aware of what a binary search is. So I'm actually doing this uh, thing on my Patreon I just started where I'm going to go through, I feel like going through these leak code problems, especially in the categories, looking at a bunch of problems, right? So I have three binary search type problems pulled up here, and we're gonna. I'm going to dissect the problem description from each of these, look for the similarities, that way when we enter an interview and we get one of these variation questions we haven't seen before, we can look for these clues, these similarities, um, in the problem description and say, oh, this is similar to these other ones, you know, a little bit of pattern recognition here, and then we know that it's binary search. And I'm gonna be doing this for each category. I just started, so it's probably gonna take a while, but uh, I thought binary search would be a good place to start because it's pretty easy. So here's three binary search questions. So let's look at the problem statements and find similarities here. Okay, so this is search and sorted array. Suppose an array is sorted in ascending order. Sorted in ascending order, is 100% related to binary search because binary search can only be performed on sorted arrays. So this problem says, suppose an array is sorted in ascending order. Let's look at another one. Given an array of integers sorted in ascending order, same exact thing. So you could see the pattern there already. Sorted in ascending order in two of the problems that are binary search so far. I just picked random ones. Um, write an efficient algorithm that searches blah 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 this is the third one integers in each row are sorted from left to right so sorted we're seeing sorted in every single one of these problems so far now i'm under the impression that every binary search variation question is going to let you know that the array is sorted you might want to ask during an interview if they don't tell you whether the array is sorted or not that's a good question to ask hey is the array sorted in this case if it is sign number one that you might want to be using binary search Let's look for some more similarities here. Okay, in this one, what we're seeing is we are given a target value to search. Okay, so we're looking for a target. That's exactly how binary search is implemented as the original version is you're given a target and you're looking for it in a sorted array. So we are given a target and we have a sorted array. Sounds exactly like binary search. So this is really making me think that it's binary search, especially if I get this in an interview, right? Um, if we look at the next question, 
Your algorithms run time. Oh my God, that's just a clear one. Find the starting and ending positions of a given target. Another keyword, target. So we're seeing target in both of these two. All of them have sorted. All of them are sorted. Two of them have targets so far. Oh, we're looking at the third one. Oh wow, let's see. Uh, we have we're taking in a target here, right? An uh, efficient algorithm that searches for a value. So it doesn't say the word target here, but we do see it in the method description, and we're looking for a value. So that's just another way of saying target. All of these are sorted. All of these are looking for a target. This is very very high suspicion that it's binary search. It's almost definitely binary search. Now the final giveaway that it is for sure binary search is your algorithm's runtime must be order of O of log of N. Now this isn't usually given in an interview. Usually they want you to find the optimal solution and tell the time complexity yourself. So you'd be really lucky to get this, uh, maybe in an internship kind of interview, but we're seeing your algorithm's runtime complexity must be in the order of O of log of N. Wow, that's very interesting. Um, we're also seeing that in the next one. Wow. Okay. So O of log of N. Great. And, uh, this one does not say it, right? So sometimes you're not going to get that O of log of N int hint, but, uh, that should basically label it for sure as binary search. If you got the target sorted array and it has to be log of N cause there's what if, there's no other algorithms that you're using log of N on a sorted array. Another thing that's very common as well in binary search is uh, returning any, it, when you see return negative one, if it's not found, that's also just a common binary search related thing. Um, I also want to, and that's also in this problem as well, so negative one if you don't find it. Um, so, so I also want to look at the solutions for these problems because I think that uh, there's definitely going to be some similarities um, between the solutions as well. Things that I've noticed from binary search variation problems are that uh, oftentimes you're going to be implementing a regular binary search, much like this, looks very similar to a regular binary search, like while left, less than right, you're calculating this midpoint. But the thing is you're doing this, you're gonna have some kind of different condition here, right? This isn't the normal condition, right? Something more normal looks like it down here, right? You check if the nums of midpoints equal the target and then you adjust the boundaries accordingly, right? Uh, up here, we're doing something a little bit differently and that's the twist. So you're doing some kind of variation. You'll also notice that um, in some of these problems, like this one is a very popular one, search in a rotated sorted array or search in some kind of shifted array that pops. Uh, there's ones where you, you find the minimum element in a shifted array or you find the element in it or you find the maximum element. In these, you're gonna find uh, some of these variation problems. You're gonna do two binary searches, one of them to find some kind of thing to understand the array, like the pivot element, so we can find which side that we actually wanna search on. So this is like finding the pivot element, like fi figuring out which side we're gonna be searching on for our actual target. And uh, then down here is the more normal binary search. So sometimes you'll modularize and you might even wanna just go into it once you figure out it's a binary search problem and just write out the function binary search. Just write it out and then think from there. That's what I would recommend maybe during an interview say, I know that this involves binary search, so I'm just gonna write a binary search as a reference uh, for myself. And then you can maybe make changes, change the method name and just change it from there. But writing out a basic binary search might help you once you know for sure that it involves a binary search. So this problem is pretty straightforward. Just the little caveat right here. It's the same as a regular binary search and then you got that little condition change. Let's look at the solution for some, uh, the other ones. Okay, so this problem, once again, we have two separate binary search calls. Uh, there's no regular binary search in this actually. It's going to be, uh, both of these methods have that twist on them. So these are both modified binary search methods. So, you know, you're not always gonna just have a plain binary search in here somewhere. So. Um, I think the main goal is thinking about these conditions, thinking about the task you want to accomplish here, the twist or the variation, like what's the hard part about this? And it's always involving, you know, it's th this is the same, right? This is the, calculate the midpoint. It's regular binary search. The difference is how you're adjusting these boundaries and how you're searching for something. So that's what you really need to figure out when we're looking at these problems. So in this case, we modularize twice. This is find starting index, find ending index, and uh, yeah, pretty straightforward, just that little twist on the boundaries. So let's look at uh, the third one. All right, so this one's a little bit more unique since it's on a 2D array. Yes, you can do binary searches on a 2D array if all of the rows uh, or the subarrays are sorted, so you can do that. 
Um, so this one's actually a little bit easier than the other ones. There's not that much thinking. The main thinking point here wasn't really the boundaries. The main thinking point here was just kind of accessing that element using this uh, little formula here, midpoint divided by columns and then midpoint mod columns, just finding the right spot in the 2D array and then comparing that to the target. So this is just extracting the element is the main hard part here. Um, so just looking out of all of those three problems, if we look at even more, I'm sure we'll see even more patterns, more similarities. So I'm gonna keep building onto this, on um, this guide I'm building, which uh, is gonna take forever. So don't expect it to be done or anything like that anytime soon. But uh, just starting off here, I think that we've come across like the main points, right? Log of n is gonna give us for sure, you know, it's binary search pretty much. Uh, sorted array, target value, log of n, then we implement a regular binary search. Sometimes it's one, sometimes we modularize, we do two. Sometimes it's just the twist. Uh, we need the little, um, we need to just adjust the boundaries according to what we're actually trying to accomplish. And uh, sometimes it's as easy as, you know, in a 2D array, it's just something as easy as this. So maybe we don't even need to overthink it as much sometimes. But that gives us a little bit of an overview on how we can identify problems in an interview, whether or not to use binary search based on just look. I think this is a good way to learn and do pattern, just doing pattern recognition on the problem statements so that we can get comfortable with how these look, find the patterns, and when we get them in actual interviews, we will be able to identify the problem category. So I don't know what problem category I'm going to do next, uh, but, you know, stay on the lookout. I'll probably upload a video or something. But I'll be working in this doc to kind of like dissect these uh, in every all the problems on Leak Code. So check that out. If you're interested, it's going to take a while though. So thank you guys for watching. Please like and subscribe as I continue to try and grow my channel. I really appreciate everyone that watches once again. And I hope I can upload some more videos for you guys today. And uh, that's it. So see you guys next time. Enjoy uh coding and uh maybe some leak code in a bit all right see ya peace